Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a very special video for all of you, my loyal subscribers who have been watching for years upon years on this channel. I wanted to share with you the other creators that I subscribe to here on YouTube. You're all subbed to me, but I have to be subbed to somebody, right? There's some content that I watch for enjoyment. And to simplify things, we're gonna pull all the gaming content out of it today and focus on the creators that I watch when I'm looking for an escape, when I wanna have fun, when I wanna be entertained, when I don't wanna think a whole lot about video games. These are the people that I gravitate towards. I do most of my YouTube watching in the workout room. I have a small, sad little empty room in my house that I filled with some very basic workout equipment, and pretty much every day I work out for an hour. While I'm working out, however, I hook my phone up to the computer monitor that sits on a Titanfall box via a USB adapter, and I watch YouTube content while I'm doing push-ups, while I'm doing sit-ups, while I'm doing bench press, whatever. So yeah, that's me pretty much every single day here in quarantine, and without any further ado, it's time to unveil all the channels that I'm subscribed to. The first one I want to share with you today is Critical Role. That's what you saw there in the exercise room. The shortest version of that is that it is eight voice actors to get together and play Dungeons and Dragons and participate in a massive campaign with a huge story and background and its own lore and everything. This is one of the newest additions to the things that I've watched. My wife has been trying forever to get me into it, and I will admit it took a long time, primarily because I've never played D&D before, and also because there's just so much going on, jumping in at episode 200 is kind of challenging, but worth it. Uh, they tell a truly epic story that spans across hundreds of episodes and hundreds of hours of content, and the smart thing about this channel, there's a lot of D&D channels out there, but what they did is they chose to go with eight professional voice actors. So when they meet a new character, when they get ready to have a conversation or do any story element, they can seamlessly slip into and out of character, project voices, make new voices. They're very good with their voices and podcasts and entertainment. They know how to make jokes and move on and keep the conversation flowing. It's an excellent group of people to watch and an excellent story to watch unfold. They do a great job respecting their community, even including fan art and most of their streams and videos, and just generally seem to be good people. My wife enjoys this for an entirely different reason. My wife watches this with me. She's very big into the role playing and fantasy and storytelling. Fan fiction-y kind of elements of it and fan art, because that's very much so her community. I appreciate the battles, which I find amusing, and I think that the overarching story is quite good and worth your time as well. If you want to check out Critical Role, I recommend starting at the very beginning of Campaign 2 and watching up to current. It's like 500 hours of content, so have fun! Next up is Red Letter Media, which in my opinion, they make some of the highest quality content on all of YouTube. They're a film review channel, and again, I think one of the premier film review channels on YouTube. It's a group of independent filmmakers, or former independent filmmakers, since I think they just work on the channel now, working out of a huge warehouse that they got in Wisconsin, and they film all sorts of skits, they make their own movies, they mostly review stuff, and I think the show that most people enjoy that I would most recommend to you is called Best of the Worst. This is where four filmmakers sit down and watch three utterly terrible movies while drinking and making fun of it, and then they have a roundtable discussion and try to decide which movie is the best of the worst. Basically, they are watching garbage and extracting comedy gold from it. I am a sucker for bad movies, especially funny ones, as you've seen on the little film reviews on this channel, so I find this one to be amazing. It's, it's entertaining. Me and my wife watch it together, and I would recommend Best of the Worst to almost anybody. Also, they're about an hour long, which is perfect for my exercise. The actual film reviews on the channel in terms of the series review or half in the bag are also very good. They usually have high production value, they open up with a couple of skits that are good production value, and they have a serious conversation about films. Now those my wife isn't super interested in, so I'll probably watch those by myself on my lonely workout days but I still think that they are excellent. They have celebrity guests on occasion like Patton Oswalt, Macaulay Culkin, and Rich Evans from The Ellen Show. If you wanna check them out, I have linked Best of the Worst down there below in the description, and it's a great starting point. Moving along, let's talk about Internet Comment Etiquette with Eric. This is one of the most bizarre channels that I'm gonna end up recommending, but I absolutely love it. I think the content's entertaining, and on any day that it comes out, it's probably going to be the most entertaining thing that I watch. The host you may recognize as 
as the former Gardening with Salvia guy. He also had some film work and he did some writing for It's Always Sunny in, on, in Philadelphia. Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I haven't actually watched the show, so I don't know. And I don't know where this idea came from, but basically he just started talking insane amounts of shit to people in the comment sections of various YouTube videos and Twitter and whatever, while pretending to be respectful and using that writing background. And let me just give you a brief example. Hey Alex, you got some dickhead posting videos on your channel and he's full of shit. I subscribed to see your crazy ass screaming about the make-believe Tom Clancy novel you call life, not this Da Vinci Code dipshit trying to scare my ass with nonsense words, but good thing I don't trust evil grandpa so this guy's got no power over me. Hey, one love, I tried out some of your boner pills and drilled my anime sex pillow all night. Shit works great, totally ruined that pillow. Thanks man, can't wait till she gets out of the washing machine and globalist. So Eric goes to the dark corners of the internet that I would rather not personally visit and extracts all of the interesting or funny things out of them. And I also think that he's true, he claims to be the best ad man on YouTube. It's probably true. Uh, sometimes half of the videos are just one NordVPN skit that, sp that spirals wildly out of control or loops back around. It just gets so crazy. did like uh, David Lynch parodies for NordVPN and all sorts of other sponsors, but they're always very funny and the content itself is very good. The guy appears to give actually zero fucks about his channel. He even did a video on de-optimizing his channel, putting a tit over his face and uploading videos at 1 a.m. and trying to lose as many subs as possible. I, I think I kind of like this channel because he makes the kind of content that other creators wish that they could make and get away with. He describes himself as big money salvia, not big morality salvia, and then he'll hit you with an ad, but it'll be an entertaining ad on top of that. And all of the things that he says and does on Twitter or YouTube comments are the things that are in my brain that I hold back and don't say and don't do to people so that I don't give myself a bad image. I am going to recommend that you watch the Alex Jones episode as the starting point. It's a character, a person that many of you are familiar with. He savages Alex Jones, uh, does the gay frog memes, and I just think that it's a good starting point for the entire channel. Enjoy. In the back half here, we're going to be talking about all gas, no brakes. This is a relatively new channel that is on a meteoric rise to success because the content is amazing. It's kind of like a real life version of internet comment etiquette come to life. Basically, this guy just takes his little camper van and goes to all sorts of crazy events and interviews the people on the ground, Flat Earth Conference, Bigfoot, MAGA rallies, you name it, he's been there, he's done it, SpaceX rocket launches. And I think the cool thing about it is that you get the really real opinions of the people that are there on the street during these events. For example, he did an interview outside or maybe, I can't remember, inside a burning building during the George Floyd protest. He got uh, sprayed by mace during the next protest. And then the, like the very next video, he's going to a Proud Boys rally and then a MAGA rally and then Sturgis. And then he's going to take a break from politics and go interview Bigfoot hunters for an hour or two. It's kind of a madman. And most of the people that he interviews are insane in some way. But I think that this is actually better reporting than most of the mainstream media, which is depressing. During the initial wave of George Floyd protests and Minneapolis riots and stuff, the media was constantly trying to say, what are they protesting for? What do they want? What inspired this blah, blah, blah? Well, my man on All Gas No Breaks just went into the middle of a riot with everything on fire and just started asking questions. And we got a better view of what was happening and a better perspective than anything I saw on TV, which is kind of depressing. And that's the recommended episode for this one. That's probably where you want to start for this channel. Next to last today, we're looping back around to film reviews. And I want to talk about Cinemassacre. This is a very, very old school YouTube channel, probably the oldest of all the ones that I've recommended today. As a matter of fact, I think the content and character actually predate YouTube, which is kind of impressive. It's hosted by James Ralph, who you probably know as the angry video game nerd, and he does two types of shows that I enjoy. Now, this channel has a lot of content. It uploads at least every day, if not two or three times a day. But the number one series that I like is the Angry Video Game Nerd series, where James will review some super old games, often super bad games, and just savagely trash them. It kind of takes that retro feeling of the things you used to play when you were a kid and reminds you of how bad these games really are now or were then and why they're probably not remembered as being famous or popular, even though they may have been in your collection. But uh, the skits are, the reviews are funny, they're aggressive, a lot of cursing and sort of infantile humor, but it works. And a lot like internet comment etiquette with Eric, typically near the end, things start spiraling out of control and it becomes an increasingly high production value skit with him battling and destroying the game or the characters in some kind of bizarre way. And it's super fun. Next up, the man does a lot of film reviews, which again, I enjoy, uh, mostly retro stuff. And he likes to review 
retro games as well, like a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff, a lot of 80s, 90s stuff. That's a big nostalgia for me. Scary movie reviews. The dude is probably the most hardcore, nerdy, scary movie review person that I have ever watched in my life, doing live commentary over Night of the Living Dead and solving mysteries in film about the 1930s Dracula that nobody has yet solved. That was an impressive episode as well. Uh, the channel's been turning out amazing content for over a decade now, and if you want to check it out, I would recommend starting with the Angry Video Game Nerd series. Last but not least today is Nick's Fears. This is the newest channel that I've started watching recently. There's a huge backlog to go through and kind of a dark horse for this list. I didn't even know this channel existed. This was totally off my radar, but my brother recommended it to me and I checked it out and ended up really liking the channel. It's one of the regulars, I well, the backlog. I'm working through the backlog while I work out. But basically the host, Nix, is a horror movie review channel, a film review channel, but not just any films, not films like those other ones that you've seen on this list, but she tends to go for the really crazy shit. And I mean, just, shit that I didn't even know existed, probably didn't want to know existed. We're talking obscure, foreign, out there, just radical, bizarre stuff. Whatever it may be, it most certainly won't be boring. Uh, it may be scary, but not boring. There are also reviews of films and there are they serious? Are they good or bad? Are there artistic merits to a variety of films? And if I'm not mistaken, I think she went to film school or perhaps art school for a bit. So she has a background in this. Some of the videos that really stuck out to me were Beyond the Black Rainbow and Social Oppression, which analyzes it from that. Well, if that's what the movie's about, there's The Gay Nightmare, which was a Nightmare on Elm Street review. But the second one, the one that nobody talks about because it's outrageously, stupidly, hilariously gay. There's a review of Rob Zombie's entire filmography on the channel and if that filmography even has any merit or if he's just a hack. Now, outside of the film reviews, the channel has a lot of overlapping stuff with uh, Supernatural and these days Internet Supernatural, so it's creepy pasta kind of things. I haven't watched very many of those yet. I did watch one called Supernature, which was very entertaining, and I mentioned it on stream, and now the stream will not stop talking about fucking dogmen, and I I'm going to have to figure that one out on my own. But the channel is really good. I think the best way to think about it is she's kind of like the new Elvira, but for YouTube. I'm kind of new to the channel, so I have a lot to catch up on. I'm not going to try to expert on this one, but it's one that I'm just kind of watching the backlog of. That's it for this review of my subscriptions here on YouTube. I hope that you check out some of these channels. I hope that some of them tickle your fancy. Yes, I know it's a gaming channel, but just recommending other gamers is too easy. I want to broaden your mind. These are the things that I use to escape gaming. I strongly hope that you check out at least one of them. They're all excellent content. If you enjoyed this kind of content, for whatever arbitrary reason, since most of the screen is other people's stuff, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.